Hello and welcome to the first video on SPSS, Getting Started. We're going to begin this tutorial looking at how we use the different windows. We're going to look at the data set. Um, this is a data set which I've already uploaded into SPSS, so we won't go through those exact steps of how to do it. But keep in mind, this is a different data set that you'll be using com compared to what's in your assessments. So the first one we're going to look at is the views. Now, what we're currently in is the variable view window, and we can begin in the data view window. So you notice just down the bottom left-hand corner, we can change between the two windows. Now, this is really important because the two of them have very different purposes. So what we need to do first, though, is upload data into SPSS. As I've said, it's already been done, but just to show you how we did it, starting with an Excel folder. So here we have an Excel folder, and all we're doing basically is selecting all the data that needs to go into it. In this case, there's 200, well, up to row 214. Copy, paste, and then we then edit and then paste that in through the data view. It's important though that we look at only the numbers. The text uh, relating to the variables is something which doesn't go into the data view, and we'll, look, we'll deal with that later on. So with SP, X, SPSS, we can use data from Excel or many other formats, but it is really important that we only paste in the numbers, not the actual variables, into SPSS. So once we've got our data into SPSS, we then need to actually give titles to the different variables and fill in their information. So first step will be providing the name for each variable. So as you can see, I've already given the names here. Um, ignore the filter bottom down the variable and some of the others. But this is based upon the names that we had in the Excel spreadsheet up in this dark green row. The light green one will form what will become the labels. Labeling your variables is really important. This is where all the key information on that item or variable goes. This can have spaces though, and can be longer than the variable name. Um, so keep that in mind that you wanna have all the key information about the coding, about what the variable item was, uh, what its name was, all that sort of stuff, as well as what each name, each uh, number represents, as you can see here. The measure column is important as it, real, as it has a lot of implications for what tests can be run for that variable. If we are dealing with a nominal or ordinal variable, we need to ensure that it's named as such, as we can see here. Um, if we're dealing with an interval or a ratio variable, then we select scale. So for example, only interval or ratios can be used for mean analysis, such as t-tests or ANOVAs. So it is important we uh, give the right measure to the, each variable. If you're not sure about these, please do a little bit more research into what those different variables represent. Now, once we've got our data, will it be in the data view? We need to go through and do the editing process. Now, I have already done it for this data set, but it's important that once all everything's edited and named, entered and named correctly, that the data is cleaned. So you might want to go through and clean any data when you have a data set and remove any errors that are in there. This could be potential outliers, um, and it's really important to identify these, whether it be manually or through using some sort of analysis such as min or maximum frequency analysis. We also have some variables which may be reverse coded. What that means is that we've actually the way in which we've collected the data uh, we've labeled the item or the variable name in itself that the respondent dealt with was perhaps measured in the reverse way to the other ones so this is done so we can identify those who aren't paying attention or to encourage respondent engagement because they see that the, the questions are changing so they're more likely to pay attention to identify reverse coded items though we need to read the items very closely and determine if they are worded in the opposite direction as some of the similarly related items for example the ones pp1 through to pp9 if we we're using a seven point likert scale as we have here to reverse to change the reverse coded to the the normal coding approach all we're doing is changing the, a one a score of one to a seven a two to a six a three to a five etc so this is done through SPSS. I'll touch on this a little bit in some of the later videos, but we also need to make sure we tell SPSS to change a four to a four, because like many things here, SPSS can't read our minds. So if you do want to learn a little bit more how to do that, you will be able to find some tutorials for that. Uh, it is quite a simple thing to do. This is done generally as well through the transform and recode into same or recode into different variables. I always recommend recode into different variables. So that concludes our talk about getting started entering data into SPSS, the data view, the variable view, a bit of editing, a bit of coding, looking at reverse coded variables. We're now going to look at actually running some tests.